Pox Inking Media, we're delighted to be joined by father and son duo. I want to introduce you as one Floyd Schofield Jr. and Senior. Uh, how are you guys doing? I understand you've just finished training. Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. It's not, nice to have you on our platform. Um, I'm going to start with the Senior. I've read you know, about your background, your story, where you guys have come from. Um, for fans that don't know, you, you've come from a really hard upbringing. Uh, and I want you to just briefly tell the fans how you've got from where you were to this moment today. Okay. Um, where we came from, we came from being homeless. Um, I used to be a music executive. And when I decided to get custody of my son because he was in foster care, um, they made me leave the music industry. And so I had a lifestyle um, that I couldn't afford with a regular $10 an hour job. So we ended up homeless. And the only skills I knew was boxing because my dad was a boxer. He taught me how to fight. So that's all I could give him to try to give him something that would help him make money in the future. And he just grew up saying he was the greatest boxer of all time. And I followed the dream. Like at eight years old, he started competing for the United States. He was homeschooled. All he studied was boxing. So he, his goal is to be the greatest boxer of all time. And so I followed that journey. It was tough, but, but we getting there, still grinding. Great. And, you know, just your, your early part, you know, when you say you were homeless, you know, for the fans that, because in the UK, the homelessness is not a bigger issue as it is in the US, because I've seen it first time now. There's a lot of homeless people in the US, especially in, in California. Do you want to explain to the fans what it was like actually, you know, living on the streets in that? You know, what was it like obviously having a young son and then getting by day to day? It was, it was hard. It was very challenging. I used to have to pay drug addicts to watch him because the only job that I could find was three hours away. So I would have to ride a train three hours one way and ride a train three hours back and hope they had my son, that they didn't get rid of my son. Um, and it's hard as a single parent and let alone um, as a brown man in America trying to do it. It's no support support system for you. It's no welfare for a man. You know, you had to do it on your own. So we were sleep in the car sometimes. Sometimes we were sleep in the shelter. Um, and we just grinded, grinded and trained every day. Had our minds set on this vision of, of where we wasn't struggling anymore. And it's interesting that most fans won't realize uh, or people who have kind of lived that kind of life to be able to trust your son with the safety of a, of a drug addict, as you said, you know, just making decisions like that can't be an easy. No, and plus I didn't have a choice. At that point, I didn't have a choice. That's all I could find. Couldn't afford um, childcare because childcare would have took the whole check. I wouldn't even been able to make it to work. Um, and then, you know, from there, I just started, I went to school and got a better job to help us make a little more money. And we just ran into really nice people that helped us along the way. Great stuff. And, 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 and one thing is, a lot of times when people see homeless people, um, they can automatic prejudge and think that the people did something wrong. And that's not always the case because it was just, you know, I was used to a lifestyle that was way more expensive than a $10 an hour lifestyle. And the house that I was living in, the cars I had, it, you, I couldn't possibly afford that. So it ain't always something somebody did wrong that made them homeless. And I hope that's educational for people that are watching. Uh, and Junior, what are your early memories from that? You know, obviously your dad's there grinding away, going three hours away to work. And, you know, you've been left with people that you probably don't really know that about. What, what's your early memories of that? Um, I didn't really have any memories um, of when we were homeless because I was a baby. But I have some memories, you know, nights where my dad had to go without eating because me and my brothers we had to eat um, and then just him working all day. I would have to stay with my neighbors all day. And when he gets home at nighttime, you know, doing some training and some pad work and then off to bed and do the same thing tomorrow. So I think that's my earliest memory. You know, he always made it seem like everything was fine. So I didn't really know we were, you know, struggling. So he made it everything all right. Sweet. And, and what, what was the turning point, you know, where you were able to leave that life behind and then start making progress towards, you know, where you guys are today? Did something happen or was it just luck? Um, I could say part of it was luck, 
it really it wasn't luck it was belief you know i believe that once you set your mind and if your heart is in the right place and you're giving honor to the most high they, he's going to guide you through it and you know people came into our life and one person came into our life that helped me own to get a business and that was my first restaurant and then another person helped me you know just doing nice things for people they just pop up and want to do nice things for you so i say it was really the universe helped us and guided us because truthfully I don't know even know how we made it out but we made it out and and junior and with regards to yourself your early memories of boxing uh just tell the fans you know you know what was it like punching the pads for the first time getting hit in the nose because I always like to know because that's when your first real test you know comes to like because mm -hmm. most kids don't like it when they get hit on the nose <laughs> yeah um it's funny because I, I used to hate sparring with headgear you know as a seven-year-old eight-year-old I used to tell my dad, like, take this off of me. It made me claustrophobic where I couldn't, I couldn't function with it on. So I think when I took it off, I felt, I felt more alive. Um, but I, I can't remember the, what it felt like the first time I got punched. But I'm pretty sure I'll put back on the headgear after that. So, no. <laughs> I don't know. Now, um, him, Floyd, he, he been in the gym since two. He was in a playpen you know, when I was training, doing my thing. So he don't, he wouldn't know. To him, it's like riding a yeah. bike. Um, he always was in the gym fight and he hated headgears, but you know, people complain so much. Why well, you got this kid spawn without a headgear? But he always, since he was little saying, Dad, I'm gonna be the greatest. I'm gonna be, he always wanted to be a pro. And I'd be like, you're not old enough. You're not old enough. So for him getting hit in the face, he love it if he get caught. To him, that's yeah, just it's exciting. Like I gotta get back. That's it. That's what I was looking for. I wanna get him back. because. The kids that turn out to be champions, they say, I'm going to get you back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he love it. <laughs> and uh, with regards to your boxing style, because I know your dad was a big fan of Sugar Ray, Hagler, and he's kind of worked on implementing that into your style. And I see shades of that when I want to watch some of your fights. So talk to me, what would you describe your boxing style like? Um, I would say it's unique. I would say like... I can adjust when I have to adjust or when my dad needs me to adjust. And then I can fight a bunch of different styles. And then it's just unique. It 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 depends on my opponent on who I'm fighting. That's who uh like you'll see shades of Sugar Ray probably or um Willie Pep or Marvin Hagler or Mayweather. It all depends on my on how the fight's going really, on the tempo of the fight. So Willie's one of my all-time favorites. I love that guy. Yeah. 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 And what, I, say, I say Floyd know, like Floyd know all the styles of boxing, all five styles and both stances. Um, so for him, he understands for every style is a counter style. So, and his job is to take away the person's strengths and expose their weaknesses. So whatever style is effective against his opponent, that's the style he's going to use to break them down and stop them. Okay. And you're fighting a super featherweight. Yep. Super feather. Is that the weight you're going to be taking at, you know, when there's title fights on the line? Or is that where you just kind of building your career at? Oh, no. I moved up to lightweight now. Okay, sweet. Lightweight. Yeah, I moved up to lightweight. I had went on a growth spurt. So I had to move up because I couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> uh, you've still got two years of growing left as well. You're 19. Are you 19 now, still? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and how tall uh, are you, Junior? I'm about 5'10. Five ten. So yeah, you're pretty big for. Um, well, that is pretty big. So lightweight, yeah. you're going to be looking to join. You know, the four or five kings at lightweight. I'm guessing that that's the aim. Yeah, that's my goal. Who's the four or five king? Well, uh, it's interesting was, you mention that. Go on. Junior's about. To I would think. What, what no, you, no, no. I want to hear. Oh yeah, his. So. His. Um, so we was talking about the, uh, the the four or five kings at lightweight. So you know you. I'm going by the names that the media constantly mentions. So you've got Haney, okay. Lomachenko, uh, Ryan Garcia, Tiafimo still up there, and Giovanni Davis. Um, I'm not sure what weight he's at, but if he's a lightweight, he's up there. And obviously, Combosa, so he's top of the tree at the moment. Okay. Oh, we're gonna. We're not even worried about none of those. Okay. We be in camp with with most of them anyway, getting them ready for their fights. So. We're not worried about them. Did you say Tefimo Lopez too in that? Yeah. Okay. I, I, okay. I, I would put Tefimo in there. Um, okay. 
Sure. So with regards to uh, junior, so how long do you think before we see junior in that list of four or five? Because he had seven fights last year, which is like pretty remarkable in the COVID period. And I'm guessing it's going to be the same sort of flow this year. Yeah, about four to six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want we want to um, get him in the ring all the time, but it's it's hard to get. Fighters are scary these days, oh, so sweet. we gotta um, keep moving up the ranks to it. They mandatory. They're not just gonna step in the ring with us, you know. So um, soon as soon as we could get one of them as a mandatory, we'll get them in the ring, you know. We offered Devin Haney a, an exhibition fight for a million dollars. They're not going to get in the ring. Okay. Well, you mentioned Devin Haney. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you, because uh, I read, you know, there was some sparring and words were exchanged. Do you want to briefly tell us what, what, what happened there? Um, well, one, we got there. I was about 17 years old, and it was before I had my first professional fight. And I went down there, and I did my thing, you know. I, I felt... I showed what I had to show and they know what I did in that ring too. But we had an interview one day and Bill just comes on, you know, I I was going to sleep, but Bill comes on spazzing out on my dad, you know, trying to take over the show or whatnot. And I guess he got caught in a couple of lies. And ever since then, you know, everything died down, but they know how everything went and we know how everything went. Well, I could say Floyd, that was the first time I must say thanks to the Haney's because by them inviting Junior in, he really realized that he's on that level to compete with these champions. Um, he hurt Devin, you know, cracked Devin, and, you know, things is what it is on, on that end. Then he went into camp with Shakur. He worked with Shakur. We got um, Jojo Diaz ready for his last fight with Devin. We got Sean Porter ready for his fight with Crawford. Um, we was in there with Robert Easton Jr. So he sparred all the champions, not just Devin. So, um, I believe by the time it's time for him to fight for a belt, he's already seasoned. And they know he's seasoned. They know he's coming. So I think a lot of people are going to move out of 135. Okay. And, and then with your current promotional situation, I understand you have a manager who's getting your fights, or uh, is it a promoter? Um, Floyd is signed to FS Promotions, his own company. But okay. we got a partnership with Davies Entertainment um, where they get us a couple of fights a year. But... Davies Entertainment is an entertainment company. So we work with all promoters. They don't have no problem doing co-promotion deals, co-show deals, everything else like that, because they're an entertainment company. Obviously, promotion-wise, in the US, especially at the moment, you've obviously got Top Rank, PBC, and then you've got Matchroom USA. Is there any of them guys that appeal to you? Could we potentially see this young man on any of them platforms anytime soon? Um, all of them said contracts, but the contracts wasn't right. Um, you know, we want to work with a, with a good promoter, but a fair contract. So, um, yes, I think that we will be with probably the zone. Okay. Probably over there in the UK, That's you know, the UK is different. Y'all love y'all boxes. hundred percent. And obviously match with 44 shows last year, which I believe is a, some sort of record. Yeah. That's so a lot. We might be over there with y'all. <laughs> I, I hope so. Um, and obviously talking of big shows, Big shows bring, bring bring big money. And I've read Junior, you've made some sort of comment in, in the past where you've said when you get your first big paycheck, you want to make a lot of changes. You want to change people's lives. Is there something that strikes out to you? And what's the first thing you want to do when you get that big paycheck where everybody's paid and you've got some spare cash to, to help someone? What, what is it you want to do? I think I'm going to take a homeless person on a shopping spree. That's always been my like my thing because you'd always see it on YouTube. Where the hell he gonna keep his clothes? No, nah, like he'll. You <laughs> Good gotta point. Understand. <laughs> you know, of you course, you gotta a wardrobe with as well. The, with the, um, answers, but of course, like I will find a homeless person, give them a steady job. First, I'm gonna make sure they're you know sane, and if they are, give them a steady job, a place to stay, and then you know maybe that bond will build where they can you know be someone in life i don't know but i would take care of them just one person though. really yeah okay well our plan with the with the big money is no right wish now, that you know right now is. right now we um have a deal with community village and we build houses for the homeless that's what we currently do now 
So um, we will continue to grow that with them building houses for the homeless, more than one person, um, because it's a lot out there. And also we have a Valentine's Day coming up um, where we giving back to foster kids through this, um, the children's shelter out here. And we look to do that um, nationally, help um, foster kids. And we also have, you know, every year his Thanksgiving dinner with the Salvation Army for mothers and children that's homeless in the shelters. So we're gonna continue to do that, continue to give back to people and change lives. And hopefully they could go and change other lives. And, and, and that's brilliant. And I just noticed that both of you, you know, how would, uh, it's a question for both of you. How would you describe your relationship with each other? Cause I can see a bit of a friendship, respect. <laughs> How would you just you answer? You go first. Now, you gotta, you gotta go first. I think, you know, I'm still dad, but he's been around me so much because he always been homeschooled, always been trained. So we spend every day together that he's more like a friend, like a little brother that think he's a big brother because he's taller than me now. But it's like that. I would say it's like a big brother relationship until it's time to do more boxing. After that, then that's when dad and coach come out. But like when we're in the house and stuff, that's when like all the jokes and he be playing too much. Yeah. So it's like a big brother um, relationship until it's time for business. And then we get into father some mode. And what, what do you do out of boxing, Junior? You know, uh, what do you do to take your mind away from it? You know, most guys your age are playing PlayStation or chasing girls. <laughs> um. I tend to stay on the video game part of side. Like my dad makes sure I'm studying boxing. And if I like if I get my breaks, I'm usually yeah. on the game. So that's about it. I'm I'm a I stay in the house 24-7. That in training. That's hardcore. And last question. You come across as a really pleasant young man and you seem too nice to box. And when I see you fight, you're in killer mode, you know, you're punching with bad intentions. There's almost like a bit of a ruthless Mike Tyson type feel about the way you fight, even though you don't fight with that sort of style. What does it take you to switch? You know, what, what, what happens from the ring walk to the, you know, what, what you tell me? Um, just, I know business is business. And at the end of the day, like, you know, you got to go in there to knock the dude out and hopefully they make it out. Okay. And if they do, then you make, you check up on them, you shake their hand and, you know, you give them the respect that they need to be given. Um, but when I'm coming out, I usually tend to have fun because, you know, everybody wants to touch your hands and that's when the spotlight is on you. So I like, I'm smiling and, you know, I guess giving my opponent, you know, making them basically think like, oh, he's just the kid and whatnot. But when I get in that ring, it, it automatically switches. I guess it's from the amateurs, you know, and it transitions to the pros. Sweet. You're fighting in uh, 26th of Feb, I believe. Do you want to tell the fans where they can watch you fight and where they can follow you on social media? Uh, I'll be fighting in San Antonio, Texas at Davies Entertainment. And my what? And I will put up a video where they can watch it on um, a stream like a day after the fight, though. If mm -hmm. I can't get the actual stream happening now, and I'm trying to work out with a company to do it, but we don't want it to lag on y'all. So I will post up a link. Sweet, and we'll obviously post the fight highlights. And you got to tell where to follow you. Oh, Kid Austin. Kid underscore Austin one on my Instagram. What's the Twitter? Um, Kid Austin 11. Mm -hmm. I think. And then FloydScofield.com. The website. And then I will be setting up a Twitch account too. Twitch. Is it called Twitch? Yeah, it's called Twitch. Twitch, yeah. And I think your TikTok's ready, ready and firing as well. Yeah, 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 I didn't know that until a couple of days. It's Kid Austin <laughs> I'll force you that into it. Yeah, it's Kid Austin one for the um, TikTok. Thanks to you, you all told us to set it up, so that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok's the future, man, if you want them young fans. So, sweet, man. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Floyd and Floyd. Oh, um, thank yes. you. So we look forward to following your journey and I'm 100% confident that you guys are going to go all the way to the top. And I feel like it's going to be a bit like I know you had a bit of uh, um, some issues with the, with the Haney family, but I feel like it's going to be a similar journey where you're fighting away, then boom, you're going to get signed up by somebody. You're going to be fighting on pay-per-view on the zone or whatever it is, and you're going to be a household name. Yes, yes. And we're going to fight Devin Haney in the future. We're giving him four rounds. We're going to stop him in four rounds. So the world going to see it. 
Okay, well, next time I see him, I'll, I'll gonna mention that to him and see, see what response we get. <laughs> okay, thank you. Have a thank blessed you. one. Have a good night. Thank you. You guys as well.